So over the weekend, Novak Djokovic won his ninth Australian Open and his 18th Grand Slam, battling an injury and a tough draw to get the win over Daniil Medvedev in the final. He's about to overtake Roger Federer for the most weeks at number one of any male player, but it hasn't all come easy. And I want to take a look back at the story of the comeback he's been on since 2018, where he almost retired due to injury and being down in the dumps and talk about how mind blowing it is that he's had this recovery and been able to get back to his ultimate game. So let's talk about the three reasons why his comeback is crazy on this episode of The Slice. I go fair. Well, welcome back to The Slice, folks. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. And thanks to our sponsors, Courtside Sports, 10% off on brand new tennis gear and Bear Mountain. We're going to take a look at Novak Djokovic's comeback from you know, the worst time in his career in 2017, 2018 till now, where he's 18 grand slams, about to take over Federer as the number one player with the most amount of weeks at number one. And he's done all this despite the odds and despite a lot of hurdles that he's had to jump over. So on our channel, we talk about the big three a lot. You know, I'm a Federer fan and some people think I'm a Djokovic hater because of that. But that's totally not true. As reporting on the slice or reporting on the tennis to do doing the slice for the last four years, I've had a front row seat to the greatness we've witnessed in Djokovic's recovery and return to his peak form, like I said. So the reasons why his comeback has been amazing is because of the absolute place that he was in, first of all. In 2017, just as I was starting the slice, Novak Djokovic was in a massive slump after losing at Wimbledon in 2016 and the US Open final in 2016 as well with injury and with form. Uh, and he was just really a shell of himself during 2017 and he ended up taking the rest of the year off after losing at Wimbledon in uh, 2017 with an injury. So comes back in 2018, still isn't looking himself, gets in, plays with the injury at the Australian Open, loses, loses to Hyang Chung. Also, where is Hyang Chung? He's gone missing since then, I think also due to injury. Um, but then Djokovic opted to get surgery. And then he ended up coming back probably too early by his own admission and a lot of the people I'd talked to about it back then. And back then, I was wondering, where is, where is the Djokovic that we used to have seen? Because I remember, I didn't watch as much tennis in 2013-14, but he was absolutely, obviously, dominating the world tour from, you know, from 2011, really, until 2016. Uh, and he had gone to the peaks of his career where he had won four slams in a row. He was number one. And then he admits on his own in some really cool interviews I've seen with Graham Benzinger that he lost it a bit emotionally after that French Open win. And then, obviously, he got injured as well. But in 2018, he came back a bit too early in Indian Wells and Miami. He lost to Taro Daniels in Indian Wells and then Benoit Paire in Miami. Is. I mean, I'm, I'm trying, but it's it's not working and that's all. That's all it is. I mean, I am obviously not feeling great um, when I'm playing this way. And, you know, I, of course, I want to I want uh, to be able to play uh, as, as well as I want to play, but it's just uh, isn't, it's impossible at the moment, and that's all. His wife, Yelena, admitted that he actually retired for 10 days. He told his team he couldn't do it anymore. He couldn't take the losing uh, with, the, with the injury and the comeback, and he was just down in the dumps. So from that place, he's come back to where he has now, uh, where he's won 18 slams, like I said, and he's right in the mix with being the greatest of all time with Federer and Nadal, and he's just elevated himself from there where he really wouldn't have been in the GOAT debate if he had retired there with 12 slams to now where he is at the all-time peak of tennis. So the comeback is amazing um, because we've seen Novak throughout his career be one of the biggest fighters, the most passionate players, roaring around the court, ripping his shirt off in the Australian Open like we talked about before, and he just really didn't have that fire anymore. But like the GOATs all do, like they've all had to do in the careers, they come back. So we saw Novak Djokovic trudge through the French, through the clay court swing, getting better with every tournament, losing the French, but then showing up to Wimbledon. And the really the turning point, I think, for it was when he beat Nadal in the semifinals there in a five-set epic, and he really got his mojo back. Not necessarily his best level, but his winning mojo back. He went on to win Wimbledon, to win four of the next six majors and six of the last 10. So he went from down in the dumps 
to back to playing his best tennis. And he's done that and he showed that he can go from where he was dominating in 26, 2015, 2016 to where he's the best player since 2018 that we've had on the ATP Tour. So one of the most incredible things about how he's done that turnaround is the way that he's adapted because he likes to say, and we all like to say age is just the number for these goats, but he's also had to change his game like the other two guys have done to suit his older age now. So he's beefed up his serve with his new coach, or not so new anymore, Goran Ivanisevic. We saw that if hit with him getting over 100 aces at this year's Australian Open. Serve has become a weapon for him. He started to stand on the baseline more and take balls even earlier and finish points earlier So because even though he still can because he's taken amazing care of his body and he's still super flexible and can do those animalistic points. He knows that that's not good for him to do anymore, so he's able to shorten points and play more quickly that way. And then also just being older, the tennis IQ becomes another weapon for Djokovic. So we saw that in matches like last year in the Australian Open against team where he just you know was able to find ways to win even though he wasn't physically at his peak there. And then especially this year against Medvedev where he just picked him apart from the baseline, put balls at Medvedev's feet and made Medvedev self-destruct. So the ways that he's been able to adapt shows that he's absolutely cut from the same cloth that Federer and Nadal have. And adaptation, evolution is necessary to maintain greatness because we all are aging. But Djokovic has adapted as good as anyone ever has. And now he looks like he's almost playing some of the best tennis of his career at the Australian Open. Like I said, battling through injury and battling through adversity to get to his 18th slam. So Novak Djokovic, his comeback has been amazing because of the perseverance of what he's had to go through, the mental ups and downs, how he's turned it around with his play and how he's adapted his game. Honestly, he, I think he's become even mentally stronger now than he was earlier in his career. And he talks about that with him becoming a more whole, complete person with his emotions, with his family life, uh, and with his game on court. And we obviously saw that, even though I lo love to mention it, at the, at the Wimbledon final 2019, where he had to save two match points from coming down against Roger Federer. So this is a tribute to the comeback that we've seen Djokovic on for the last three years now, playing his best tennis, coming back from the brink of retirement, to produce that so we are in the presence of greatness it's been an absolute treat to watch him do it and it's not likely to end anytime soon so we can buckle in and be thankful for more tennis like this from one of the all-time greats so that's why novak djokovic's comeback has been absolutely mind-blowing and we are lucky to be able to watch it